How to Avoid Destruction and Rebuild Let us read 2 Kings 5 15-27 15, And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came and stood before him, and he said, Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, except in Israel, now therefore, please take a gift from your servant. 16 But he said, As the Lord lives, before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. 17 So Naaman said, Then, if not, please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth, for your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. 18 Yet in this thing may the Lord pardon your servant, when my master goes into the temple of Rumen to worship there, and he leans on my hand, and I bow down in the temple of Rumen when I bow down in the temple of Rumen, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. 19 Then he said to him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a short distance. 20 But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha the man of God, said, Look, my master has spared Naaman the Syrian, while not receiving from his hands what he brought, but as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. 21 So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him, and said, Is all well? 22 And he said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Indeed, just now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. 23 So Naaman said, Please, take two talents. And he urged him, and bound two talents of silver in two bags, with two changes of garments, and handed them to two of his servants, and they carried them on ahead of him. 24 When he came to the citadel, he took them from their hand, and stored them away in the house, then he let the men go, and they departed. 25 Now he went in and stood before his master. Elisha said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant did not go anywhere. 26 Then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive grooves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? 27 Therefore the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence leprous, as white as snow. Here we can see three characters Naaman, Elisha, and Gehazi. Naaman is a man who was from Syria and he was a high official. He is a Gentile, he is not from true God. Elisha was a man of God. Gehazi was servant of man of true God. Gehazi served the man of God. God healed Naaman through Elisha. Let us read 2 Kings 5:15. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came and stood before him, and he said, Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, except in Israel, now therefore, please take a gift from your servant. The man who never knew true God through Elisha, he came to know the true God and he confessed I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel and he wanted to give some gift to a true servant of God but the true servant of God denied. Before returning to his country Naaman said, For your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to the other gods but to the Lord. That is what commitment he made. When he was going on the way to his country, Gehazi met him. Gehazi spoke some lie and he wanted to take the gift from Naaman. Gehazi took the gift from Naaman. He used his master Elisha's name to take the gift from Naaman. Let us read 2 Kings 5:26. Then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive grooves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Elisha said to Gehazi did you not take the gift from Naaman and is it time to receive money and cloth everything? The leprosy of Naaman came upon Gehazi because he took the gift from the Naaman. Naaman's leprosy came upon Gehazi, the curse of Naaman came upon Gehazi. 
people receive the leprosy because of sin. When he was receiving the gift from the Naaman, Naaman's curse came upon Gehazi because that was not a time for Gehazi to receive gift from Naaman. Let us understand from Haggai 1 colon 4 9 4, is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses, and this temple to lie in ruins? 5. Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. 6. You have sown much, and bring in little, you eat, but do not have enough, you drink, but you are not filled with drink, you clothe yourselves, but no one is warm, and he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. 7. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. 8. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple, that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. 9. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little, and when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. 2 Kings 5:26 says then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive grooves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Is it time to receive gift? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive grooves and vineyards, sheep and oxen male and female servants? Is it time to build your paneled house? God destroyed Gehazi because he was trying to build his house. Let us read I Corinthians 3:16 and 17:16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? 17 If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. From this we can understand that we are a temple of God and God is supposed to dwell in us. When God can dwell in us, when we are leading a holy life then God can dwell in us. When we are leading a sinful life then that is called temple of God that is body is ruined. When we are leading a sinful life then God cannot dwell in us that is called body that is temple of God is ruined. When we are leading a sinful life then we are destroying temple of God that is we are spoiling our body. When temple of God that is our body is ruined, we should rebuild the temple of God first. We have to rebuild the temple of God that is our body. How to rebuild the temple of God? We have to change our ways. We should not live according to our will, others will or satanic will. We should live according to the will of God. When we live according to the will of God then we can lead a holy life that is called our body is built, temple of God is ready for God to dwell. When temple of God is ruined but we are not bothered about that, we are trying to build our own house. God will destroy them. I Corinthians 3:17. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. When we have understood that we are leading a sinful life, immediately we have to change our way and we have to lead a holy life. Instead of leading a holy life, we have started building our own house, that is called defiling the temple of God then, God will destroy that man. That is why today many people are going through all kind of problems in the life. Gehazi was a sinner. He was supposed to build the temple of God but instead of that, he was trying to build his own house. It was not the time for him to build his house, that is why Elisha was asking him, is it time for you to build your house? When God's temple was ruined, he was not bothered and he was trying to build his house. God was angry upon Gehazi and curse came upon him. God destroyed him. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. That is what happened in his life. When we read Haggai 1 colon 4 is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses, and this temple to lie in ruins? The temple of God is ruined and these people are trying to build their own house. Haggai 1 colon 9 says you looked for much, but indeed it came to little, and when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. These people are looking for much, but indeed, it came to little. When they brought it home, God blew it away. 
They are running and earning much and they are bringing it to home. They want to build their own home. So, they are running here and there to bring more to home. They looked for much, they brought more to home but God blew it away. Why? Says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins while every one of you runs to his own house. When we are not ready to lead a holy life and we want to save more worldly things, worldly property then God will destroy them. God did the same thing to Gehazi. Is it time for you to build your house? That was not the time for Gehazi to build his house because he was a sinner, he should rebuild the temple of God, his own body. He should come out from all the sinful way and he should follow the Lord Christ Jesus. Instead of that, he was interested to earn more that is he wanted to build his own house. Instead of building God's house, he was trying to earn more money to build his own house. God destroyed him. This is the one of the reason, many people they are facing lot of problem. First is we should not worry about the worldly things. We should rebuild the temple of God then God will provide our all needs, otherwise, God will destroy us. Matthew 6:33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. God says first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It means that we have to build the temple of God. That is we have to lead a holy life then all the things shall be added unto us. God will provide our all the worldly needs, food, cloth, shelter. Instead of seeking the kingdom of God and the righteousness, if we seek the worldly things, God will destroy us, him. Let us change our ways. Let us live for God alone. God will take care of us and God will bless us. God will remove all the anger, curse, and sin from us. This is the only way to have a true life on this world and after our death. So let us pray, Father in heaven, we praise you and worship you. Lord, let us not live for us. Lord, let us not build our own house. Lord let us not seek for our own thing. Lord, make us to seek you and Lord make us perfect and holy like you. Lead us Lord Jesus. Enter in our life Lord and bless us Lord. Lord, let our body be a worthy for your dwelling place. Bless us. Amen.